Anglo-Zanzibar War, which lasted for about 38 minutes after hostilities started, holds the title of being the shortest war in history. The Heligoland-Zanzibar Treaty, which was signed in 1890 by Germany and Britain, serves as the starting point for this story. While Germany was granted control over Tanzania's mainland, Zanzibar was given over to British influence. With their newly acquired power, Britain moved to appoint their own puppet sultan to govern Zanzibar as a protectorate of the British Empire. In 1893, Hamad Benthwani, who had backed the British in the region, was appointed to this position. After the death of pro-British Sultan Hamad bin Thwani, his nephew Khalid bin Bargash seized power and favored German interests in the region. It is commonly believed that his cousin had him poisoned. Within a few hours of Hamad's passing, Khalid had already moved into the palace and taken over as Sultan without getting permission from the British. The local British diplomats declared that Khalid should stand down. However, these warnings went ignored by Khalid as he was instead beginning to assemble his troops surrounding the palace. By the end of the 25th of August, Khalid had his palace guarded by nearly 3,000 men, a number of artillery guns, and even a royal yacht that was only lightly armed in the nearby harbor. Two British warships, the HMS Philomel and the HMM Rush, were already anchored in the harbor at the same time, and troops were quickly being sent ashore. Two additional British warships, the HMS Raccoon and the HMS St. George, arrived in the harbor the following day. On August 26th, a final ultimatum was given to Khalid, requiring him to vacate the palace by 9 a.m. the following morning. However, at 8 a.m. the next morning, Khalid sent a reply stating, We have no intention of hauling down our flag and we do not believe that you would open fire on us. Furthermore, at 9 a.m., the order was given to the Royal Navy ships in the harbor to begin bombarding the palace. By 9.02 a.m., most of Khalid's artillery had been destroyed and the palace's wooden structure, which had 3,000 defenders inside, had begun to collapse. Around this time, which was only two minutes after the bombardment began, Khalid is also said to have fled the palace through the back exit, leaving his servants and soldiers to defend the palace by themselves. By 9.40 a.m., the shelling had stopped, the sultan's flag had been taken down, and the war had been declared as over in just 38 minutes. One British marine was hurt, compared to over 500 of Khalid's defenders who perished. Khalid's removal allowed the UK to install a pro-British sultan, Hamoud, on Zanzibar's throne, where he reigned for the following six years on behalf of Her Majesty's government. As for Khalid, he managed to escape the local German consulate. After navigating his way out of the country, he made his way to modern-day Tanzania, only to be captured in 1916 when British forces invaded East Africa. After serving his time, he was later allowed to return to East Africa, where he died in 1927. This 38-minute conflict, known as the shortest war in history, is significant because it signaled the start of a critical change in the balance of power between the industrialized West and the soon-to-be colonized world. If you enjoyed this video and want to join our journey on learning about the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the human experience, please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the Reverie Media YouTube channel. You can also connect with us on Twitter at The Reverie Media. We hope to see you there.